hello, welcome to my channel. Today we have a special guest. This is uh, Tommy Kelly. Should I call you Tommy Kelly or Tofu Tommy? Definitely call me Tommy Kelly, yes. <laughs> Tommy Kelly. So you don't use your nick uh, Tofu Tommy anymore? No, I don't, no. <laughs> okay, so right now you are the Tommy Kelly. Okay, uh, you're really a very special guest for me because um, let's maybe in, um, explain how, how we have met. And you are so special because I can say that I criticized you terribly, yes? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Like I say, these things happen on the internet. Like it's, we, we can misinterpret people, we can make mistakes. There's no offense taken. Okay, uh, to be honest, I didn't know you personally before. I have never heard of you as a vegan activist, but mm. all of a sudden I heard of you on multiple channels as ex-vegan. Uh, therefore, it, um, it affected me, especially when I saw you on, um, on Tristan's channel. And I also didn't know Tristan well. Uh, actually, I don't know him yet well. I can say only that yeah. I know him a little bit. Uh, but I saw you on Anti-Vegan channel. At least I think we may call his channel Anti-Vegan. Would you call his channel Anti-Vegan? Yeah, yeah, I would probably call his channel anti-vegan, but I think it's not that he's really anti-vegan. I feel that he's just pushing back because he feels that his way of life is being threatened. He's obviously a farmer. He believes in, obviously, regenerative agriculture. He feels that the vegans obviously are affecting his way of life. So I can understand both sides, if you see what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. obviously, the, obviously the vegans obviously want to look after the animals he's, he's obviously got his side where it's all about his family so I can understand both sides I would say I see, I also think we should talk um, even if there are differences between us I think we should talk and Absolutely. to be honest I didn't really like the way for example uh, Isaac came to his channel um, and I felt that his intention was to destroy his faith. So I think such things shouldn't happen because our purpose is not to destroy anybody's uh, faith. So I yeah, I, I also I became you. slightly more critical towards vegans recently, mm -hmm. thanks to you also because you contacted me and this forced me uh, to to make more research or to start uh, because when you contacted me and we started our conversation so i know that to have conversation with somebody i must be open so i must be open to hear your reasons and uh, i must be positive so after you contacted me i went back to primal edge health um, channel and i with open really i was really open i wanted to find out what vegan, ex-vegan, what value you could have found in anti-vegan channel. So I thought maybe there is any value. So I was searching for it. So therefore, maybe today my opinion, my perspective is quite different than at the moment when I uh, criticized you or when I attacked you. Because on that moment, I didn't know you. I only saw next vegan because there was like a series of ex-vegan, like next one, next one. And all those people that I have never heard of them before, all of a sudden, I heard them as of ex-vegans. And I considered you as a proof for anti-vegan channel that something is wrong with veganism. So so I was really angry at yes, and, and that uh, I can time. I can understand that, yeah. But I would like to address your point that you're talking about. Ask yourself, to put into context, a lot of people don't know the situation that's happened with Ask Yourself and uh, Tristan. So a lot of things happened in the past. It was obviously on Tristan's channel before. It didn't really go well. I would say as well, I think that they should have probably gave Ask Yourself a chance to obviously speak as well. I, I do believe, but, but that's not my place to obviously Tristan was wrong in that. He obviously did what he thought was right at that time. And I feel that Ask Yourself has been really quite abusive a lot of times to Tristan. He's obviously threatened a lot of things. He's constantly harassed him over the internet. So I can understand why he didn't speak to him. And so that's my opinion on that. But as far as me going on anti-vegan channels, I would say I went. Uh, Tristan has been absolutely great to me. I would say Tristan, the persona that you see on YouTube is not what Tristan is like in real life. Tristan actually cares a lot about people. He actually tries to help people. And I feel that that's what a lot of people don't quite understand about him because he's got this <laughs> YouTube persona where he likes to obviously... <laughs> troll people and things like that, troll people back. So it's important to understand that that's not the person that he has in real life.
Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I hope we will uh, discuss this topic a bit uh, wider, also, uh, uh, and not not in like a black black and white perspective, but um, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so if I I tell you that for me it was uh, to be honest because you probably know that I also had already a chance to talk to uh, to Tristan directly, and to be honest, I was shocked when he. Um, when he pronounced the name of my channels multiple times to his uh, viewers to uh, yeah. to check my channel and he even spelled the name of my channels and so this was this was shock for me and the fact that he was polite to me i, I was also so much surprised because i expected rather you know a fierce battle <laughs> something yeah. completely different so this was a big surprise for me and uh, and anyway, I wanted to check whether it is possible or not to talk at all as as human. And I I think it's very very important because um, as I said that I also became slightly critical towards vegans. Of course, I am vegan. I'm vegan activist. I'm vegan YouTuber. But uh, um, I think that. Um, Okay, there are um, there are several issues. Maybe we will talk about more about them more in details in also other meetings because there are like several of those yeah, right. issues. But what shocked me was why uh, anti-vegan channel and big big anti-vegan channel was the first who uh, invited me to to talk because yeah. I contacted also several vegan channels. And I really uh, desperately wanted to have some serious conversation about international cooperation. I find it so necessary mm -hmm. from if about the, um, the interest of animals. Because, for example, in Poland, Poland, I come from Poland. I say this if anybody doesn't know, okay? And you're from Scotland, let's yeah. make it clear. Therefore, your pronunciation is so difficult to understand, yes? <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so my country is the biggest uh, poultry producer of Europe. Yes, we produce um, 1.1 billion. We produce, I hate this vocabulary, but uh, let, okay, I will say this. We kill, okay, we kill 1.1 billion um, chickens a year. We are also um, big producer of uh, beef, uh, which is mainly exported. And recently, in my country, uh, we've been going through incredible fierce battle um, on the amendment to uh, act on animal protection. It's a horrible battle. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine that deputies who voted for uh, this amendment are threatened? 70,000 70, of farmers went to streets, they go to their houses, private houses, they throw manure and pigs heads on their houses. So they cannot even go out, they le cannot leave, out, leave their houses safely right now. So all deputies who voted for the protection of animals, they, their lives are uh, in danger right now. So now I'm also thinking like, and I am contacting vegan channels from yeah. other countries. I want to have a serious conversation. Nobody wants to talk to me. So the first channel who uh, who accepted me was Primal Edge Health. So he was like the first foreign channel to accept me. And I am now I'm having a conversation with you. And and also some carnivores contacted me and they also want to talk to me. And uh, I think it's really, really I important. I don't understand this. Conversations because it's not an us versus them situation. We've got to keep opening the conversation. We've got to kind of create dialogue because I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. So if we can keep talking about things and mm -hmm. we can improve the lives of animals any better than it is at the moment, I think that's really, really important because everybody's against factory farming. I think factory farming is absolutely cruel and it's, it's horrible, but I think a lot... A lot of people don't see the, the, the small family farms. I don't think they really know enough about them. A lot of these farms are really, really well looked after. Obviously, the animal is killed at the end, so I can understand that people are against that. I was as well. But when your health deteriorates, you've got to find somewhere in the middle. And for me, it was as being ethical as, as I possibly could be. And that was obviously looking... I, I don't eat beef. I don't eat 
anything apart from fish and uh, the smallest bit of dairy and eggs that I get from my local farm that I looked after. So I don't eat beef or anything like that. I don't eat bacon. I don't eat pork. I try to be as ethical as I possibly can be. So for me, it's about looking after my health as well as try to be as ethical as I can because I'm still, I still care massively about animals. That's not changed one bit. And if I could be vegan, I would have been vegan for life in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, but do you want to know what is this uh, current amendment about? What we are yeah, fighting absolutely. for? We are fighting for uh, the ban of um, um, ritual slaughter, mm-hmm. uh, kosher and halal. Halal, yes. For and halal for for export, because we, you know, eighty percent of our beef, Polish beef, is exported. Mm-hmm. And we export to Israel and to you know to other countries. So we have a massive, um, we have a massive um, ritual slaughter in Poland. Although there are only few Muslims uh, or few few those you know this other religion people living here. So so this is a huge problem. And can you imagine that um, that it might be such a big problem to to fight for this law? Although Absolutely. you know Polish people don't need it, but there is like incredible fight against it. Okay, so uh, kosher and halal is one thing, but uh, the other thing is fur, fur industry. Mm-hmm. So also Poland is number three uh, fur producer in the world. Yes, and uh, it's also incredible, incredibly fierce fight to ban this. And those you know guys from fur industry, they are very rich. They they have they they have mafia. Actually, they are mafia. So they are threatening people. They are threatening politicians. It's a fierce battle right now. And I think that those politicians who right now are in the front of fight for animals, they they may uh, expect uh, some support from vegan communities or from animal rights. Um, activists and uh, you know and it sucks for me it sucks when i hear all vegan channels right right now they concentrate on john venus like vegan again so who cares like who is john venus sorry who is he who is he he's a pretty boy yes a lot lot of people seem to get caught up in things that really don't matter it's all about money and things like that so i think it's really important to keep directing the message back to what you're actually talking about which obviously is the animals as well that's what you're trying to do so i think other people should be trying to give you a platform should be actually opening the dialogue should be speaking about these things because i'm against fur i feel that it's horrible i don't feel there's any reason why we should be having fur in this day and age yes, just exactly. for vanity for show exactly. so so i think that um, okay so Although myself, I am radical in my opinions, right now I see things quite different because, you know, for example, uh, Joey Carpstrong, he calls even um, welfareists uh, hypocrites. They say we shouldn't talk about welfare, we shouldn't yeah. negotiate with people who accept, but... Uh, can, can you imagine? We have politicians whose life is in danger because they try to do something, just something for animals. And should I go and call them hypocrites because they are not vegan? They are heroes. Yes. Exactly. Anything you can do for the animals is a big stepping stone. And I think that if if vegans tried to get welfare on their side and you work together, it would be a hell of a lot better for the animals because Yes, there is people that obviously need to eat meat, but if you can make the life of the animals better in some way and they're not we abused... We should talk not... about it, yes. We, we should, should not say we won't talk to those people. Mm-hmm. So I think um, if you, if Tristan or anybody else is against fur industry, against um, uh, halal, uh, kosher, and this the most cruel methods of uh, slaughter, there is some space... Uh, for to, for us to have conversation, Absolutely. we can we can be together against something. Yes, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Therefore, like I said, that today I see things slightly different, uh, which doesn't mean that I completely don't have any problem with. Um, uh, that uh, conversation. Okay, uh, I already told you on chat that 
um, one of the reasons why I attacked you was that you mentioned financial uh, issues yeah. in that conversation. So this is something also what I would like to say to international community, also vegan community, that um, I might talk such things in my local language, yes, like knowing um, the knowing the mentality of my own people, I might talk uh, about such things, but uh, if you are talking in English, then this is international language. So all people from all cultures understand you. And for example, in my culture, um, finances are kind of is, um, inti uh, intimate thing. Like for me, talking about some of these finances and such issues is like taking off his pants. Uh, like we don't talk about such things. So, mm. so for me, uh, yeah, I felt um, I felt terrible to hear that you are discussing financial issues because we never do this. Like I think Slavic nations don't have. We have different attitude to finances. Yeah, I think also that. Arab Arabic people they have different attitude. They don't talk about it. Um, at least those Arabs which I met were quite similar so mm -hmm. for me this was strange but like i told you for me i didn't like what you did but then what i realized what paul did was this blew out my mind this was much more so so i didn't <laughs> like that you mentioned financial issues because somebody might have the impression that vegans do it for money yeah but what i would say to that like I ca caveated in the actual video, I said that there's not not everybody does it for money, but there is a big, big proportion of vegans doing it for money because their lifestyle is funded, they're jet setting all around the world. There's the regular activist that goes out in the streets every single week and fights for the animals is doing it out their own pocket because they actually care about animals. These guys are making an absolute fortune of money. They're taking it out the, the, for the for the animals. They're saying it's for the animals. And there's a lot going on behind the background that a lot of people don't know about, but you wouldn't know that unless you were an organiser. In these movements, I personally was an organiser, so I knew what was going on. I knew that there was a lot of things, there was a lot of money getting taken, there was people having full-time jobs. I just don't feel it's right. I feel that if you're passionate about animals, you should be doing it for the, the actual passion of the animals and not for the money. Yeah, I hope we will get back to this topic maybe another time, another time because I am um, mm -hmm. also interested in your opinion in this battle, AV versus Joey Carbstrong. I hope to uh, understand more of the situation maybe from your side. Or I, I'm curious of your opinion. I'm thinking about it a lot as well, uh, but maybe not today because first of all, I really like. I think our first conversation should be about um, your attitude to vegans and to veganism because um, originally uh, some time ago I checked your channel so I saw that you received a lot of support and love from vegans so I don't understand what what made you change your mind that, um, okay, you say you still care about animals and you try to avoid meat as much as possible, uh, but what, mm, okay, I went to uh, Tristan's channel as his opposition, mm -hmm. uh, but I, th I have the impression that you feel good among those people and you also post uh, against uh, vegans, uh, and for example, how do you feel next to the guy whose Nick is a vegan exterminator? Do you feel, do you find yourself one, a part of this community? Well, firstly, I would like to say that I'm not anti-vegan anyway, because I've got friends that are vegan, that they're, they're actually doing really, really well, their, their health's really, really good. My, I, I advocate for doing what's best for you. I left veganism because my health actually declined massively. I was suffering from constant migraines that were actually debilitating every single day. I got to the point I couldn't get out of bed. I actually had like a facial droop on my left side. My, my, my speech was actually slurred. The, the doctors actually thought I had a stroke at one point because of that. 
I started to suffer a lot of weight loss, which impacted my eating disorder recovery in the past. Even though I was eating really, really well, I actually had a support team that monitored everything I ate. Everything was done through a dietitian, so it was all really, really going well up, up until maybe about the second to third year where things declined. And like I say, I was I had a, a terrible pain right below my left ribs. It was as if somebody had actually stuck a knife into my left side of my ribs. At that point, my dietitian actually said to me, she says, I think you need to go vegetarian. I turned around to her and I said, I don't really want to do that because I'm an ethical vegan. I, I really couldn't do that. So I, I walked away from that appointment and I, I didn't obviously go vegetarian. The next three weeks to four weeks, I actually my health declined even more. So I had I was left with the choice that I could do what I wanted. But if my health declined, I would obviously end up in the hospital. So I went vegetarian. Things never really changed massively over the next two months. And then I added in some local fish that was basically salmon. My health seemed really better really, really quickly. And I think that was down to DHA and APA because... I had suffered a lot of things that obviously like brain issues, like brain fog, memory loss, and I was suffering calcium deficiency. I had a zinc deficiency as well, which was, they didn't know obviously why I was suffering calcium issues and obviously zinc deficiencies. And I think really the fish was the big, the big part of it. It seemed to really do something, even though I was taking a vegan Omega free and Omega supplement, sorry. And I was taking B12, I was obviously taking choline as well, I was taking a multivitamin, I was taking a zinc supplement, I was taking a calcium supplement, none of them seemed to be working, but when I added in fish, that really made the difference, so for me then, I had to think to myself, I, need to, I needed to challenge my beliefs on that I needed obviously to eat some form of animal products, and for me, the most ethical I could be was eating fish, and obviously some eggs, and the littlest bit of dairy, most of my dairy, most of the milk that I actually have is oat milk and almond milk still, but I have like the smallest bit of dairy in my porridge and things like that. So that's where I kind of had to go to and I had to challenge that, but I'm still really, I'm still really ethically driven. I still believe in like doing the best for the animals and I would be vegan if I could. But for me, it's just, I feel that a lot of people don't do well on a vegan diet and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Things like creatine, carnitine, carnosine, vitamin A, DHA, APA. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And I think it's all down to conversion rates as well. And your gut microbiome is another thing that a lot of people don't understand that certain people just can't convert things as well as others. And I think you need, I do believe that you can do better on a vegetarian diet than you can on a vegan diet. And I would say that's probably where I would really recommend people do. But if you can be vegan... I would say go with that. Uh, but, you know, you talked about uh, diet a lot, but I have no problem with people um, who adopt uh, some animal products when when they have some serious um, like medical issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I am not a dietitian, but if Gojiman says that there are some several conditions which make a vegan diet very tough or like almost impossible, so I have no problem with this. So I don't have problem that you adopted those some products because even with this, you still could do many, many things for animals. And this is something also what I'm a bit critical about uh, about the vegan community, the way I see it in, I mean, English speaking community because, yeah. okay, veganism in Poland looks completely different, completely. Uh, so, okay, so, but when I uh, look at those channels, watch those channels, um, I think they exaggerate the importance of just not eating meat or any, it's, I think with, <sighs> there is too much focus on this, and with not eating meat, we are not helping animals yet. There are so many other things so important. Um, like, like I told you, for example, in my country, we are a huge producer, but we produce mainly for export. So I think we should focus more on developing countries to change their mentality, because um, 
Although maybe uh, meat m meat consumption is decreasing in Western countries, but it's incre increasing drastically in Africa, in China, Asia, yes? So, and you know, doing campaign in su such countries is so cheap, is multiple cheaper than in Western countries. So, so yeah, I feel devastated when I hear, for example, about those funds, uh, are you with me? Or yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. Okay. When such huge um, funds are um, spent on travels, like uh, 300,000, uh, uh, 300, yes? That was exactly my problem. Like I see, they're spending... It's, it's, it's a huge problem because with yeah. this, we could make a massive change for animals. <laughs> uh, I, think it's, I think as well, though, a lot of people don't seem to understand that they think that a vegan diet means that you're not harming animals, but when you really look into the truth, the FAO even put out all this, the, the CO2 and the carbon dioxide and everything that over the years were actually doing much, much better. In the UK, animal agriculture only actually accounts for 10% of CO2 emissions, obviously the methane and things like that, but the, the regenerative agriculture actually sequesters CO2 into the soil. And I think that that's really important that we do need animals, but for vegans to actually think that you should wipe out animals and that it'd be better if they were not here, that's actually more destructive than anything because we actually need the animals and the plants to work together because it's a it's a really symbiotic relationship that they've got. And I think it's really important that people understand that. And they don't understand that even in the crop system, obviously the, the pesticides and the insecticides, when you actually look into it, these things actually run into the rivers and obviously the oceans and things like that. They're actually killing and, and creating ocean dead zones as well. So there's there's even a lot that we've got to look in at crop deaths and obviously the, the crop production and everything as well. The whole system is going to have to change animals and crops. Uh, we also should discuss uh, seriously, for example, such issues like uh, waste of food. So mm -hmm. I think it's not about... Uh, whether you you yourself eat meat or not, whether you are vegan or not. For example, let's say a manager of uh, maybe restaurant, maybe he can do such um, things to um, to prevent uh, food waste because a huge amount of meat produced is just go to the garbage. Yes. So there are many, many elements, many things, but above all, we should talk about politics, we should uh, talk with politicians, because uh, we should talk about those subsidies, about bailouts, about all those other issues, yeah. not just whether you eat meat or not, yes, because yeah, no, 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 even no. if you were in terrible condition, okay, I... I understand that you had serious uh, health problems, I am not a dietitian, so I'm not going to discuss this, I just as you say this so i think you still could do your job for animals so um therefore uh, i still um, don't understand uh, like a few issues okay so you were discussing uh, financial issues with tristan so i should understand that i don't know this is your mentality that for um anglo-saxon people it's you are more open about finances or i don't know um because yes, I must, uh, I must accept this because uh, already Paul did it and he did it massively, like something which is uh, for my mentality is so weird. It's like doing the worst job for animals possible. So for me, he's like well, number one anti-vegan right now I on the internet. One, one point actually about that. Paul actually made a really good, honest point that actually a lot of vegans actually said he was lying about, which he's actually telling the absolute truth in this. Because me being an organiser for AV and Anonymous and Anonymous for the Voices Save Movement, I actually know about that how the accounts work. And Paul actually said that the business count and obviously his personal account is actually attached to the same account. And a lot of people were saying, well, that's very suspicious because that shouldn't happen. No, that's that's how it actually works. Even in the UK, you've actually got to go and open a business account with the same bank that you're actually banking with. So your business account and your personal account is actually attached to the same banking account. So that's why 
Paul actually was right when he said that he wasn't obviously want to give forward the banking account because his personal account was attached to it. So that's very, very true. I think there's a lot of suspicions going on about it. Like I say, yeah, obviously... Sorry to interrupt you, but tell me, can you explain me why he went on YouTube to talk about this? Why they didn't talk among themselves? Why me from Poland? I, I, I should uh, hear about this. I think so. I think, I think really with the way probably because they gave because very strong, very strong argument for anti-vegans. Now you know, I the first video after you contacted me, the first video from Primal Edge Health channel I checked was about this matter, and Tristan was laughing that said this is not for animals. Uh, those guys, uh, this is all about their egos. Uh, they don't. Uh, so he was laughing at them, and in that moment I felt that yeah, Tristan is right. I also have this impression the situation is ridiculous for me as well because why didn't they talk among themselves in private? Yeah, I think that's actually what it's come down why to. Why they made it public? Tr Tristan, Tristan has got a really good point and it really is about their ego because they just don't want to be the, the better person and obviously put it behind them. They want to, the, Each one of them want that donor's money and obviously... Joey was lashing out at Anonymous for the Voiceless, obviously saying that they weren't being transparent about their funds. But Joey wasn't either until Anonymous for the Voiceless called him out and he actually had to release his Patreon money. But there's still a lot of funds that people don't know about. Even in Scotland, when we actually got Joey over to Scotland, we had to obviously do a GoFundMe to actually help him with his flights and a lot of other things. Yeah, if he's getting all this money from donors and Patreons, why is he having to ask other people to go to do GoFundMe's to do flights when he's getting that money anyway? There's just there's, there's a lot that people don't actually know about, and I think even though it, he does good work for the animals. You've got to be questioning why his motivation lies and where he's actually doing it for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, I thought we would um, discuss this uh, issue in another uh, yeah, meeting. But uh, you already you want to say about this more in another meeting, or you want to say right now, like we'll, we'll do it in another meeting. Yeah, another meeting. Yes. So you yeah, think absolutely. that there is more? Okay, no discussion. All right. Uh, yeah, because first of all, I want to make it clear, I want to understand your attitude to vegan, vegans and veganism and animals, first of all. So there was also another uh, very, hmm, <laughs> from my side, from my perspective, um, terrible moment in your first conversation with uh, Tristan. I don't know whether it was the first, but the, the one which uh, I discussed in my video, uh, Tofu Tommy uh, Liberated, yes? Uh, okay, so Tristan is uh, preaching um, the core of carnism uh, um, ideology. So he um he accuses um vegans uh, in in that case it was um uh, it was addressed to av and uh, those uh, cube of truths that um that they tried to use the vocabulary like calling a calf um, a baby cow and and you agreed with him so this is something which i cannot as vegan and um i cannot understand because so i want to ask you um, ask your honest opinion about this because i think um this is uh, this is wrong this is i don't even care that much whether you eat some flesh or not if you have health problems it's not such a problem for me, but I think first of all, we must start with fight for new mentality. We must um, we must fight for a new perception of what or who animals are. Of We must fight for a new perception of uh, our relationship with animals. Uh, and this is, this is a big challenge and um, our task, because I see uh, Polish people for, I, um, my last video was, um, about this uh, ritual slaughter in mm. Poland. So many, many Polish people came to me, what you want? What, what do you complain about if animals don't feel pain? 
So many people still feel that, uh, believe that animals don't feel pain. They are like machines. So this is uh, our task to to work on mentality, to go with our message and to introduce, like uh, reintroduce animals to people that they are sentient beings like us. They are similar to us because they are conscious. They are conscious. They feel pain. They feel uh, anxiety, yeah, fear. Absolutely. So, so, um, so this is one of our tasks to also to fight with this vocabulary, uh, like. For example, I hate the word for poultry. What do you think about the word poultry? Poultry is a singular, yes? It's an uncountable mm -hmm. noun, yes? What is this, poultry? What do you think? Do you think this is a correct word? Or you think we should uh, fight with such vocabulary? I don't, really, I don't really think it's really a word that should probably be used. I don't know why it's just that they don't just use meat for what it actually is, because I think using euphemisms, as they call it, isn't really helpful, but I would say as well, I don't, what I was actually talking about when he, he talked about the, the, the babies type thing, I don't feel that's helpful either because I think it actually turns a lot of people off veganism because what they're actually trying to do there is they're trying to sear somebody's conscience. It's trying to relate a baby to a cow and I don't feel that's a good way to get through to somebody that's actually not vegan is actually trying to say oh this is this is a baby that look at this this is this is exactly like your baby because people don't relate to animals like that I feel if you talk to them in a different way and actually try to kind of take that away from them that you're not trying to really they don't feel as if they're personally attacked if you see what I'm saying I feel that's a wrong way to do it just what I've seen I mean, maybe it works with some people, but... So you have seen that the reactions were wrong for... that people reacted negatively on... Absolutely. I feel... That I've seen it personally when we, we speak to people like that, that. It just seems to turn them off because they feel that you're, you're personally attacking them and that you're judging them. And you know what human beings are like? Where if we feel personally attacked and we feel judged, we're most likely to withdraw into ourselves and not listen to anything anybody says. So I think trying to rephrase the way you say things and be a bit more relatable about what actual animals are, speaking to them in terms of, obviously, if they, if they love dogs and things like that, talking to them about characteristics of dogs, but not comparing dogs to cows and things, because when you start saying, oh, your dog's exactly like a cow, people feel attacked, and it's very, very different, because dogs are what with human beings for many many years that's the way that they have been brought up and um, they're not seen as meat because they, they aren't meat and anybody that actually said that they would eat a dog i think it was absolutely disgusting because that's them just lying to themselves obviously a lot of carnivores do say that they'll say oh i'll eat a dog i don't believe they would do that you know i mean i just feel that they're trying to basically complete people or to actually believe that they would do that but but I don't think that intention, that Tristan's intention was to make um, a vegan message more acceptable. I, <laughs> I don't think that he criticized this because he thought, oh, maybe people won't like it when you, maybe you should approach people in another way. I don't think this was his intention. So I think he really, he really tries to, actually, this is very funny because he tries to preach materialistic standpoint. He is trying to preach that animals are a thing, materialistic, you know, like they are, that meat is a thing. Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't think he actually does. I think it's, it's what he actually believes in is like, he, he sees all the people that come to him with health issues and he really cares about helping people. And the way he's looking at it, he, he does, he's, want, he's trying to push back against the pushback that he's getting because... His lifestyle is attacked, which is understandable. The why, the why he's pushing back because, if you know what I mean, it's. I think if we try to kind of come together and not push beliefs on others, I think that would be what actually feels. I, like like he, he always says, he's fine with people being vegan. Just don't tell him that he shouldn't be vegan, and that obviously his way of life's attacked and his family's attacked. So I think that's where the kind of pushback's coming from. Like. People don't like being judged. People don't like being attacked. So it's natural human and instinct. Okay. So, um, but above all, I want to uh, hear your personal opinion uh, on animals. So, um, 
so I asked about this word poultry, which I hate, but um, just for your information, um, each language uh, produce, uh, produces uh, different um, words. And um, for example, in Polish, in English, you say that uh, animals die, yes? Mm -hmm. The dog died. So in Polish, only human dies. And for animals, we have a separate word. Like we want to degrade right. animals that much that we even refuse them death. So they, and we have another word for them. So when I say that uh, my, let's say my pet died, some people um, come to me, what do you say? He cannot die, only human can die. So this is a discrimination which me as a vegan, I'm fighting against. And me, I'm trying to work on, um, on mentality, on uh, perception of animals. And me, I'm trying to, you know, teach people that, uh, yeah, those are uh, conscious beings and they feel, they do feel pain. This is what I'm doing. And uh, so what is your attitude? So um, would you call, um, for example, a cow, a person? Is it a person for you? I wouldn't say it's a person, but it's got an objective experience of the world and it's conscious, it can feel pain. So, so what is it? Yeah, so it's, got lot, is it... it's got a lot of characteristics. But so isn't a person a somebody who experiences life who is conscious, self-conscious, isn't this a more or less definition of, of what person is? Yeah, that, then we're getting into kind of semantics because then we're relate, relating animals to people again. Uh, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? I don't think we should because they're totally different and I feel that's that's where we're getting lost uh, because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're the same as in we can. We've got an objective experience of the world. We feel pain. We, we've got a. We've got a heart. We're, we're, we're all the same as in the brain structure and things like that. But I feel that we don't. How can we relate our experience to animals' experience? It's totally different because they see the world differently to us. Yeah, they've got as much right to be here as us. I feel that's really important to say that. They've, there is. They're in this world for a reason just as we are and I feel that's important I feel that we should minimise cruelty we should minimise as much pain as they can and do our best I, I feel that relating them to animals to people, animals then we're getting kind of lost in things it's, that's a, a tough one to judge for me I feel that at the end of the day you, you, you would probably look at it as this would you would you, would you pick, take an animal's life over a, a human's life or we take a human's life over an animal's life then we're getting lost in that then. Okay, so thank you for sharing your opinion. Of course, um, I but don't agree for, with for, your opinion, but... For, for me, for me, like my dogs, they, they mean the world to me. Like the, for them, for my dogs, they're as much to me as a, as a human. So if that gives you a, 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 an idea of what I feel about them, that's where I'm at. But I feel farm animals... But you said um, you said that you are uh, a believer. You are Christian, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so this is also going to be our topic, but I don't think for today, um, because actually also Jesus said something about this kind of um, position and this kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, now, to make things short, um, Jesus opposed to treating, to give any special treatment for those who are closer to us. Yes, he condemned this kind of uh, thinking. Yes, yeah, and that, that, that's exactly what I was putting out there. So, I, I was, so I, according I, I, to Jesus' teacher, teaching, we shouldn't um, give any privilege to dog over a pig. Mm -hmm. just only because uh, he's closer to us. This is egoism and this is against Christianity. Just, But of course we will develop uh, because we will discuss. Um, yeah, but obviously as well, we're, we're, we're negating the fact that Jesus ate fish. The fact of before that we're talking about before the fall, the fall really relates to a lot of what's going on in the world at the moment. We could go into that eventually, but 
Christianity actually teaches that human beings are unable to overcome their, their fallen nature on their own and must obviously turn to Christ as their saviour. That's really important that we understand that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will get back um, because we already have an appointment for the next meeting. Yes, Absolutely. and maybe even more than one because there are several topics yeah. uh, we want to discuss both. And um, me as a vegan YouTuber, my main focus and uh, is um, I focus on people who, um, and not only people, but the message, uh, this kind of um, thinking, um, using Christianity or any religion uh, to cover evil, evil towards animals. And many people do this. Many people use Bible as an argument, and this is my main focus. So no, I don't, I don't feel we should ever use. I don't feel we should ever use the Bible as an argument. I just feel that that's that's wrong. What I always say is we should do our absolute best. That's what it's all about. It's about being as kind to animals and people as you possibly can with the situation that you're actually in. And that that could be anything. Like it could be it could be health, it could be financial, it could be anything. Do your best. That you should absolutely hate animal abuse. I hate animal cruelty. And I will say this: I've I've probably not even talk, talked about this enough. I actually struggle having to eat the fish that I actually eat because it's massively hard. There's somebody that actually cares about animals. And like I, like I've talked about before, I would be vegan if I possibly could, but. At this moment in time and all the health issues that I had, it just isn't. Is that to say that that won't be the case in the future? Mm-hmm. Who knows? If it's possible, who knows? Okay, so um, you already stated um, also before in, on uh, our chat that uh, if possible you would like to um, come back to um, a plant-based diet. Uh, but um, so, okay, so the last question. So what do you think about what happens right now around John Venus and his uh, recent statement. That, that, that's, that's a tough one. Like We don't know enough about what's been going on there because John was obviously in Norway at the time when he actually left veganism. He obviously had set up a chicken coop. He obviously had backyard hens. He was going out hunting, which I don't agree with hunting in the slightest. I don't think there's any reason why anybody should be going hunting. I just... I just Mm-hmm. I hate it, but but, but anyway, he went. Um, he he left veganis being healthy. So do you condemn this? Because you you left for your uh, because for of your health problems. So do you think this was a terrible thing that he left it as healthy person? Yeah, if he left it for uh, for obviously as a healthy person, but I, like I say, I don't know his actual reasonings why he actually left veganism. He obviously said that it was for his son, which I felt probably probably is a, is a weak statement because why would he have to give up veganism for his son? But I'm no one to judge. I feel maybe it, it, through what I've heard, and I'm, and I'm not going to mention what I've heard, he did suffer certain health issues and his son suffered certain health issues, but he's not really spoken about that. But whether that's true... Don't judge, don't take me on that. I've just yeah. heard from certain people that. Yeah. But, so I, I don't know if he's been honest or what. Mm-hmm. But are you afraid that, for example, if you decided um, that, okay, your health is better now, that you can uh, go back to a uh, plant based diet? Uh, so are you afraid that if you try to, like, not even announce, but just to mention this on your channel that now you are back, you are again uh, like vegan or you are again, maybe not vegan, but at least plant-based. So uh, don't you think that uh, all those channels who are criticizing John Venus right now may discourage people like you the, to to come back to veganism? Aren't you afraid that then everybody would criticize you? Because this is weird that vegan channels are criticizing him for his decision. Just instead of saying, okay, cool, good, good, good decision. <laughs> but they're all criticizing him so badly. What no, do you think I, 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 I'm, I don't worry about that at all because I think for myself, I don't think, what, I don't think let other people make decisions for me. But for me, I'm doing the right thing at the moment and I feel that that's where I want to stay for the foreseeable anyway because my health's going in the right direction I'm the fittest I've ever been but like I always say always leave yourself open to always being wrong because 
you don't know what the future holds and you've always got to try and be open about things. For me, doing the best that I can at the moment is where I, where I see myself and that's that's what I always say to people, do your best as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I think that as for today, maybe we can finish at this point, yes? So Absolutely, we will be back. Great to our conversation the, the next week, yes? And also on your channel, yes? So on maybe on both channels it will appear. So thank you very much for the conversation. And we will see each other again soon. And thank you all. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.